Ooh, snap, it was good, man. This boy is Chef, back in with another video. Of course, this time I'm inside of a parking garage because, you know, I always like to be in different places when I record. But today we're going to talk about your girl, Nick Minaj's response on the Joe Budden podcast, her talk with Rick Ross, and her bringing up some valid points. We're going to bring up the point about basically how her singles, quote unquote, flopping is not her fault. And how it's basically because the radio pushes different songs, they make their own hits, and they don't actually play the songs that actually are getting the screams and sales by what she said. I want to say this first of all. For people saying Nicki Minaj is falling off, it's true to an extent. No, she's not the top rapper anymore, not even the top female rapper, but she had a point. Her album did go platinum with by the end of the year, so for an album that flopped, quote unquote, it went platinum, and she made a good point saying a lot of albums by more popular artists, albums barely have one go. See Shawn Mendes, for example, see Katy Perry, see Lady Gaga's album. All these people, albums barely won gold and platinum, and they're supposed to be quote unquote still huge stars. Um, and then we talk about radio pushing singles to be, you know, top hits when they're not really the ones getting screamed and sold. This is where I would give her half credit and half no credit. Because people have to realize, even though Chung Lee got a couple of radio spins and whatnot, the sales and screaming wasn't up to par from the majority of that run, so she was aided by the radio. We look at a single like, um, we look at a singles like Only in Truffle Butter or not, they did sell well. But we gotta look at um, Pills and Potion and other singles that barely pick at number 30. Those singles didn't sell as well as people think they did. Turn Me On, her single with David Guetta was hugely, hugely a hit because of the radio. The sales caught on eventually, but at first it was hugely because of the radio. We have to look at the single she dropped last year. Good Form didn't get a radio push. Um, Ganja Burn didn't really get one. It was only Chung Lee, Barbie Dreams, and I believe that was it. Oh, and Bed, that was pushed on pop radio with Ariana Grande. I think she doesn't want to admit that her singles didn't go as well as they planned. That's what she says. She doesn't make pop singles or album singles to get one push. She says she just makes music she wants. She knows good and well that Ariana Grande's song was a pop single. It was supposed to be something to be pushed, so it could be another massive hit both of them share together. We're going to pass with Bang Bang and Side to Side. So both of them did on both of the albums. You had The Light Is Coming by Ariana. Then you had a Nicki Minaj single, which is bad. So with that being said, it didn't work out. But she has a case in point where you talk about singles like In My Blood by Shawn Mendes that did decent sales but fell off way quickly. Or his current single, If I Can't Have You, that single is currently falling off the digital song sales charts but being prompted by the radio, so it's platinum technically. A song like Close to Me by Ellie Golden that didn't sell or scream as well, but was number two on the radio and number two in pop songs. Max's Light Down Low. I, I, li- I like that song. But I know Goodwill's a radio push. People aren't buying it like that. And she has a point. But with, the problem is that with her singles, they weren't being screamed or being bought like that either. Let's not forget that off that album, majority of the screams come from Chung Lee. Now, if she made an argument saying people having big singles and their album being certified gold and platinum within the day is a problem, she would have a point to a extent. Because that's the thing with Drake's album. You know, it did sell pretty well for his week. And that's the same point with um, Tiger's album. His album debuted number 17. was certified gold the first day because the taste was certified five times platinum. You have um, stuff like Ellie Ma's um, Boot Up certified five times platinum, which made her album gold the first day as well. So we do see the problems with singles being the basis of your album selling units. When we used to have Screaming Didn't Matter because that wasn't available back then, you actually had to buy the album or have physical copies of sales. And she was talking about how people that do merchandise bundles and stuff is cheating. Because we saw the whole Travis Scott controversy and how she thought about that. And she was mad at Astro World beat her out first week. I don't know. I think she, she has a point that you shouldn't have to put along something else to get to sell your album. You shouldn't have to put an incentive in there. You should just want to buy my album if you really care about my work. But that's not the game we're playing anymore. The only artists that can really do that are top artists like Drake, Adele, and Taylor Swift. And even Taylor Swift. It's pretty disappointing going from three million to seven hundred thousand for your um, album that just dropped. Now, that's good numbers, but you know, she went from three million to seven hundred thousand. So that's a huge drop off if you think about it. But other than that, 
I want to go to the part where she says people use each other to um, get clout or they're um, using different people because they know the numbers that could be up like that. I, th- I think she, she should be the last one to talk about this guy. She, she really should be the last one to mention this at all because you have to remember last year, if it wasn't for her features, she wouldn't even – I don't think she would even have visibility for our Big Bank was a decent single with her, Big Sean, Two Chains, and YG. And then we had Six Nine. She supported and stood by Six Nine until he went to jail. And then took his um, song off the deluxe version of our album. That's the definition of someone using you for just what they can do. So for her saying that other people out here using each other just to get likes and subscriptions and to get album sales, it's kind of hypocritical when you use. Nick Minaj, quote unquote. You use Ariana Grande's name, quote unquote. You use different people all the time. Your relevance is based off of who you use sometimes. Sometimes it's the person you tag on. Every person that has a Drake feature basically is using Drake. Because they know good and well that Drake will sell. And Nick Minaj used to be that way at one point too. This Hot Girl Summer, uh, I would say it's half Nick Minaj, but Megan Thee Stallion does have a buzz by herself. But having Nicki finally uh, co signed a female rapper has helped that single debut as high as it did. But I think part of her, she's speaking facts, but the other part is she's in denial as well. She has to admit that at this time, she's no longer the hot commodity she once was. Her single for the summer, Megatron, the Caribbean beat, the different um, synths in it, the video hype, the sexuality, all that combined, it debuted high and fell right to number 80 the next week, and now it's not even on the chart anymore. Her single, Megatron, it did flop. It, it was a huge flop. No radio played nothing because the sales numbers decreased immediately. It's not even on the sales chart, and it's only five weeks in after she dropped it. Same thing with good for him. She talks about music video views and stuff like that. Yes, that's important. But it doesn't help if no one's screaming or supporting the song. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't help in the long run. So let me know what you think. Does she have a valid point, or do you think she's just trying to cover her ass because she hasn't had that many singles debut high or, you know, stick around? I do agree with her. I mean, bigger artists these days, look, when you're in the position of Beyonce, Jay-Z, and Nicki Minaj, even Drake and all these guys, you don't need to have hit singles anymore. It's good to have them. Don't let them, don't believe the BS that they don't want to have them, they don't need them anymore. They do them to a stamp, but when you get to that level when you've already established your career, you can afford to not have a hit single on the radio more. You can afford not to have a top 10, top 20 hit because that's when you should be able to rely on your legacy, rely on your touring, rely on your old album still selling and getting streamed, rely on you getting your masters and all the other stuff and getting different advertising and deals like Paul McCartney, McDonough, Lionel Richie, etc. Paul McCartney, well, he had a year a hit a couple years ago because of Kanye and Rihanna, but other than that, Paul McCartney hasn't had a hit since basically the mid-80s. So Madonna, She's been struggling to have hits since the 2000s. In the early 2010s, she had a hit because she used Nicki Minaj, ironically. But without Nicki Minaj, this single probably wouldn't have done as well. Yeah, people like Lionel Richie who hasn't had a hit in years. But these are all legendary artists. And they still make their money. They haven't had a hit in years. And it's okay. The truth is, your generation of people are going to eventually leave you. And that's what she needs to know, you know. Um... The reason why people identify with Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion and all these girls more, not because they're more talented than Nicki. I don't think that's that at all. It's just that they're younger and they're with this generation. You're kind of going to the godmother phase of your career. And Drake will be there soon, too. The difference between men, you know, it's a double standard. But with a woman, youth, youth is basically all you have. And when you portray your sexuality all these years, it's not much left we haven't seen from Nicki Minaj. We've seen everything. You rap about the same thing every album. You rap about different ways you finesse dudes, different ways you sex dudes, different things. Relationships are sometimes her topic. But, you know, people don't realize she's not actually like that. She has settled down a little bit, et cetera. So it's also a believability factor, how old you are, and about hearing about the same material. Cardi B doesn't have that long to do the same thing she's doing. she got to get a new platform soon. She's not going to have that long to do that either. Invasion of Privacy was her lit album. She told more of a story, all this stuff, which is a good thing. But, you know, her being the stripper that came up, that can't always be her story. She'll have to evolve as well. Because look how many rappers we left behind because they talk about the same thing. 
Eminem's numbers of album sales have slowly been declining. Now, it's a new age of screaming stuff, I get it, but it's slowly been declining because he's getting older. And plus, you know, they're tired about the same old Marshall Mathers pulling a stunt, trying to get more clicks, more views. They're tired of the same old Drake. One day, people are going to get tired of Drake's moody behavior and him doing these subpar verses. They're going to get tired of it. And Nicki Minaj's time has come. And I agree, she wouldn't be in the tough position she's in if there was so many female MCs getting this much shine. I, I agree to that too. If Cardi B didn't exist and these other girls didn't get as much shine as her, I think she would at least have three more years on top. But unfortunately, since there's so many people come for the crown, she just got to gracefully bow out and say, I'm the queen, quote unquote, yard and talent. Just go and say, You're the queen, and hand your crown to the princess. And then you sit on the throne and make money the other way, and you get less visibility because they know you've been established. And then you let the little niggas do it. You know, like, what Wayne did for you and Drake. You always tell you how much you appreciate little Wayne. How about you start following what he did? Wayne knew in 2010, 11, how big you guys were getting. He knew that you guys want to take the throne from him. And Lil Wayne has been the top rapper since about 2012 when Drake took over. Kanye, he kind of handed it on to Big Sean. Big Sean, he's not as big as Kanye, but he tried to do it with Kanye and John Legend, all these guys. He has, Kanye's produced a couple big name artists. Dre's been done it. Dre's been in spotlight for a couple years, and he been new. Hey, I'm better than the producer. Or I'm that dude. That's why he gave you five or six megastars. This man produced Eminem, 50 Cent, Snoop, the whole N.W.A., Ice Cube, and Kendrick Lamar currently with the T.D.E. faction. He helps them out. So that's about five or six megastars right there. He's been getting the shine off of him. And now look at the fruits of his labor. That's what you have to do. You don't have to necessarily sign different artists, but do other things than just be in the spotlight. Because it's looking embarrassing when you continue to make these excuses. We know at the end of the day, your time is coming gone. And it's okay, you made a huge bag out of it, and you're a legend in your own right, so just go ahead and bow out gracefully. Or we'll continue to go on Joe Budden's show and disrespect people and cuss them out and all that, and you know, make excuses why your singles don't sell as much as they used to. That's cool as well. Anyway, it's your boy Chef from Off the Dome. Thanks for listening. I'm out, guys.